Okay, last but not least, we are going to have a look at amino acid and protein. Now, the three biological group of polymer are polysaccharide, protein, and also nucleic acid. So, we learned polysaccharides in chapter 6 previously, where polysaccharides are many monosaccharides joined together by using glyphosate link. Whereas protein is defined as polymer that are assembled from amino acid monomer that has been linked together via amide bond or peptide linkage. Now, amino acid has the general formula NH2CHRCOH, where in here you shall have two functional groups. These two functional groups are amino group and also carboxyl group. So because carboxylic acid acts as the uh, functioning group inside this amino acid, so therefore we have amino and also amino and acid. So both of these amino group and carboxyl group are bonded to the same carbon, so therefore we call this carbon as an alpha carbon. So there are 22 types of amino acid that are almost all natural occurring amino acid, are alpha amino acid. So considering the COH act as a functioning group, so alpha amino acids generally have the naming of two amino carboxylic acid. So due to the alpha carbon are surrounded to different atoms group, therefore it can easily exhibit optical isomerism. So the simplest amino acid is called as glycine or IUPAC name is 2 amino ethanol acid. So not from the structure of glycine, it is not optically active because the, uh, this carbon is surrounded by two other hydrogen. So uh, other than this uh, glycine, all amino acids are actually soluble in water. So here are a few examples of amino acid. We have alanine, leucine, serine, valine, phenylalanine, glutamic acid, aspartic acid and also lysine. Okay? So uh, all of them, if you note that, they have the same um, NH2CHCOH. It's only the bottom part in here that are all different from one to another. Okay, So um, this is how we uh, differentiate between all amino acids. Lah. Okay. okay, so from the example above, amino acid can be generally classified as acidic, neutral, or basic amino acid. So these amino acids are classified based on the number of NH2 group and also COH group. Lah. So generally, we have an acidic amino acid when you have more COH compared to NH2. Uh, and then neutral is you have one NH2 and one COH. And then uh, basic amino acid if you have two NH2. Okay, and one COH in here. So unlike any organic acid, uh, amino acid give a unique physical properties that differ greatly from one to another. So uh, these are the physical properties of a few functioning group. So as you can see that amino acid has the highest melting point of all of them. Okay. So why is it that amino acid exhibit a far higher melting point compared a far higher melting point uh, compared to this one? This is due to amino acid exists as a dipolar ion where the a proton from the carboxyl group uh, is donated to the amino group. So for this uh, for these ions in here, we call it as uh, we call it as what we call as zwitter ion in here. Okay, so the pronunciation is W I Z T T I O N. So the presence of the zwitter ion in here uh, allows the molecules inside the ionic bonds are hold by strong ionic bonds, making their um, melting point to be exceptionally high. Okay. So an amino acid is dissolved in aqueous solution at different acidity, so it has formed different substances. So for example, if it is reacting under acidic condition, so the negative part will react with the H plus to form a COH. So the net charge will be plus one. And we react with a basic solution, the OH minus will react with the NH3 plus to form the CO minus. Ah. So the overall net charge will have negative one. So each amino acid has a specific pH value where the net charge is equal to zero. So such pH is also known as isoelectrical point, where it is defined as the pH where amino acid will have a net charge equal to zero. Ah. Okay. So uh, more information you can find out on your own on that. So I'm not going to explain this further. Now, since amino acid has both COH and basic NH2 functioning group, hence amino acid undergoes three types of chemical reaction. So it can undergo all chemical reaction that can be undergo by amine that we discussed just now, where it react with acid, it react with acid chloride, and it react with sodium nitride, followed by a mix with hydrochloric acid. Since it contains a COH, which is carboxyl group, it has all the acidic properties that which include react with metal to form salt plus hydrogen, react with metal hydroxide to form salt plus water, react with metal carbonate to form salt plus water plus carbon dioxide. 
and because of this it can also be reduced by using a strong reducing agent to form alcohol it can also undergo acidification under uh, acidified catalysts concentrated sulfuric acid in reflux and it can also undergo acidation by reacting with PCL5 to form SU chloride so the third reaction in here due to the presence of both group okay it can form what we so called as a peptide linkage so the reaction will chilling two amino acids together via condensation reaction where water is given off is called as a dipeptide so dipeptide is because you have two amino acids joined together using um, uh, this uh, amide bond okay so if three amino acid we have tripeptide when many amino acids are joined together we call them as a polypeptide okay now, uh, as I always tells you, when the forward reaction is a condensation reaction, the backward reaction shall be hydrolysis. So, all protein can eventually undergo hydrolysis under acidic or alkaline solution. So, when protein uh, is broken to amino acid via NaOH or H2SO4 examples, so you can have two types of the hydrolysis. One type is what we call as a complete hydrolysis, where the long chain of the polypeptide will break into the individual amino acid involved. Okay, so all of the amino acid will become uh, all of the molecules inside the peptide bond are broken completely to form the respective amino acid. So, uh, the, however, the disadvantage for hydrolysis, uh, complete hydrolysis, is we are not able to figure out what is the original uh, structure looks like for the protein. Compared to the next hydrolysis, which is a partial hydrolysis, that grief fragments will still retain the sequences information. So when these fragments are separated and are identified, the overall protein structure hence can be reduced. For example, if we have alanine, leucine, cysteine, we have cysteine, asparagine, and then serine alanine. You can make it in such way is, uh, in so that uh, you can have alanine, uh, leucine, and then cysteine. And then here you have cysteine, and also asparagine and then in the alanine here you have serine you have uh, alanine so with that okay you can, uh, the structure will become serine alanine leucine cysteine and also asparagine so you form the uh, you, from the partial hydrolysis in here lah, you can see more or less what are the original chain of the uh, polypeptide are made of okay so this is the advantage of partial hydrolysis over uh, this uh, complete hydrolysis so all proteins are made up from log chain of amino acid so uh, you can use pro uh, you can use protein to form structural muscle transport hormones and also enzyme so these are a few examples of the function for each of the proteins that uh, I have already described just now so these are more towards um, application part so later you can read by yourself lah, okay for what are the functions for all these protein in here okay uh, so protein can be protein structure can be generally categorized into four level of complexity starting from the least complete which is complex which is a primary structure to a more complete of a quaternary structure so primary structure of a protein is shown in the order of amino acid in the protein chain so uh, this is the one chain of the primary structure so uh, this is what we learn uh, for SDPM okay Okay, so with this, I'm going to end my lesson for the chapter 8. So uh, we are going to continue with the chapter 9 video later. Okay, see you.